So thank you for coming, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to be going over lab number two uh, in the lab series. Lab number two focuses on Facebook. Um, with everything in the lab series, we're less focused on the nuts and bolts and the how-to of things and more into the philosophical reasons why we do these things and how can we do them more effectively and how can I do that to deepen my relationship with my clients, thereby leading to uh, more transactions. Um, so if you want to work on any of these on your own time, you are more than welcome to. Um, to do that, you go to ultimateclientrelationship.com, and then this is what you'll see on your screen. Um, if you scroll down here, you'll notice there are these different books. These are um, the different uh, labs, classes from each series, from each, uh, that cover each topic. Um, there's a next page down here, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff, including extra content, um, stuff from the Pacific Institute. Um, other things that are relevant to the discussion. Um, at the bottom of each one, there is a link to download the workbook. So if you guys want to have the workbook up on the screen with you as well, that would be a good idea right now. Uh, if you go to ultimateclientrelationship.com, click on book number two, and then click on the workbook here, this is what you'll get, a PDF that's going to be displayed on the screen with uh, spots for you to fill stuff in. Um, so the way that I work labs is that we're going to go through this and I'm going to pause at different points throughout the video and we're going to kind of talk on, talk about things and expand and talk about stuff that Emmanuel, the host of this is maybe not covering or things that we can expand upon. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get started with the video and then we'll pause it and we'll have some discussions and talk about things as we go along here. So here we go. Oops, I need to stop to share for one second. I forgot to share audio too. There we go. If at any time we ended up with video cutting out or there's any connection problems, let me know and I'll pause and we can go back and once it clears up. Welcome to book two, Facebook. This is book two in our Ultimate Client Relationship Lab series. Today we're gonna to look at Facebook as an ultimate client relationship database, communicating through Facebook in a variety of different methods, 10 ways to celebrate your client's birthdays, creating conversations online, harnessing the power of your app, RAS, which is reticular activating system and what you focus on and then sharing content on Facebook. So let's get started. Ultimate database, as we learned in our first workbook is the list of those that matter to you. A Facebook database may be the most powerful database we have because we can listen to what's important to those who matter to us. Now, granted, maybe not every single one of your clients is on Facebook, but given that there's over 1.3 billion people on Facebook, chances are high that many of them are. So we listen to what's important to them and we get connected through a variety of different ways. One of them being birthdays. Now you'll see it on Facebook all the time. Someone's birthday pops up. Facebook's a great database because it tells everyone they're connected to, Hey, guess whose birthday it is today, which is a great. CRM piece and everyone just says, happy birthday, be different. And we'll look at a different ways to do that. So being different, very important. That database will tell you what their interests are, milestones in their lives, activities they do. It's really important to listen to what's going on. Now IDX, which is internet data exchange. We get to share our listings. Every company does. So why not make sure that you're sharing your listings on Facebook? We'll look at how we can do that with our app. And then lastly, sharing information, fun facts, trends, be yourself. It's really important. I wrote here, what's your modern day recipe card? Early on in my career, my coach asked me, where's my recipe card? 
the reason being, I was sending a newsletter that was only real estate specific. Every month I sent a newsletter to all my database and there was nothing but real estate. And she says, where's your recipe card? And I'm like, I, I don't cook. So like no one would believe me. So as a great coach, she says, well, you don't cook, but you're a musician. So why don't you share music reviews? And the responses I got were amazing. So what's your modern day recipe card? What is the thing that you share that engages people outside of real estate? So making sure that you have information and fun stuff that you share. So what's your community interested in? What are you interested in? It's okay to be you online. In fact, the days of having two different kinds of personas, they're gone. So you might as well be you. You're the only you you can be. I think we might've heard that before. So let's look at the purpose of Facebook. Its main purpose is as a database. You can synchronize your Facebook contacts by going in and following these simple instructions. Now in my desk, we have under ultimate client relationship library, synchronizing Facebook contacts. So both for Android as well as iPhone. So make sure you go in there and do that. If you want your contacts to be synchronized, but as a database, it's the most powerful one because people update their Facebook status. They update their email, they update contact information, all that good stuff. And birthdays are a big part of it. So make sure you've gone in there and looked at that. One of the to do's I'd like for you to consider is cross-referencing your social media database against your contact list. So take a look at what you have in your outlook on your smartphone and check against your Facebook database. Do those people reside there? Now, you may not want everyone there, that's totally fine, but you may find, oh, I forgot about so-and-so, I should add them to my database. So how accurate is it? Do that cross-referencing exercise, and give yourself a number. Let's move that needle forward. It's always important to improve, always be improving. So let's look at engagement. Now, Facebook is one thing, the Messenger app is another thing altogether. So connecting through the Messenger app for those that are very active on Facebook is actually more natural than email and as powerful as a text. I have a little um, saying underneath the Messenger app here by Dale Carnegie. You can make more friends in two months by be becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. Now in the Messenger app, you'll get their attention. There's an alert. Again, it's a great CRM tool. It's a great UCR tool. They'll get an alert and you can have a variety of ways to communicate with them. Within the messenger app, you can use text or voicemail, video message, phone, uh, photo or video, uh, emoticons, hyperlinks, thumbs up. You can leave a voicemail, which is really powerful. Uh, you know, when it's birthdays, what about singing to them? You know what? You'll impress people every time you do this because they don't even know that you can do this. They'll just get a message. They press the play button and there you are, your voice, super powerful. We don't want to have calls to action. We want calls to conversation. So what kind of conversations will you have to those you're connected to? That message is really powerful. Because that call to conversation could be something like at the end of your voicemail or at the end of your video message, I'd love to connect, love to catch up on coffee, whatever that is. You're asking for a, a reciprocal uh, communication. You're engaging people. We talk about that engagement hour. So calls to conversation. I was thinking about you today. That's an easy one. Congratulations on some kind of event or activity that's been done. There's birthdays or anniversaries. There's different milestones. So if you're wondering, who do I call my engagement hour, scroll through and you'll find birthdays because everyone tells us what's important to them. So on the scale from one to 10, how often do you connect with your database? We know from, from data that we should be doing that at least an hour a day. So how often do you do it? Give yourself a rating. We want to move that forward. We always want to be improving. So I just want to stop it for one second here and talk about um, something that Emmanuel just mentioned here. Um, checking in, calls to conversation. That's These aren't things that are limited to Facebook by themselves. Um, Facebook and Messenger can be the 
medium by which you are notified that somebody has a birthday, but you could reach out on a lot of other platforms. Um, this works fine on Instagram too. Uh, if you want to send a text message, that's great as well. Um, the call to conversation is just, it, it's the step that you have to take for this to be effective. Um, Facebook is a great tool. So is Instagram uh, when it comes to just seeing where people are at and kind of getting to know uh, where people are, what's going on in their lives. It gives you a little peek behind the curtain. Um, a lot of people are migrating off of Facebook these days and moving to something like Instagram. Um, but principle will apply. Give yourself a rating. We want to move that forward. We always want to be improving. Everybody has one. What is that? Birthday. Make someone's day. If you go to my desk under Ultimate Client Relationship, you see our birthday tips. This is a really cool resource tool. Now, no one's expecting you to do all 10 to your client because that would be weird. Pick one of 10 this year for each client. So one of them is call them on the phone. It's a great reason to connect. You know that little devil that tells us they don't want to hear from us? Well, this is an easy one. When it's someone's birthday, you can easily call them and you have a great excuse to call them. So call them on the phone. How about a text message or a voicemail? You know, there's different apps out there and goes right to their voicemail if you didn't want them to answer. Um, a handwritten note is, or a card is always appreciated. I found this really cool thing about a year ago that you can personalize Coke bottles. Buy.sharecoke.com. You put a person's name in there and it's a glass Coke bottle with their exact name, exactly how it's spelled. It's a really, really cool thing. Very different. Now you've got to be organized this way and you, you got to make sure that you know what you're doing because there's delivery times and all that. But you know what? It's certainly something to consider. How about a link to their birthday? So if you go to history.com slash this day in history, it'll be on their specific day, not the day and year, but on the specific day, there'll be some historical information that you could share. It'll create a hyperlink and you could share that with them different. No one's doing that. Stand out, make them feel important. Now you can send a link to their specific birth day. It requires the year as well as the day. You dot are getting old dot com. Now it's really funny. Uh, it'll give the exact amount of time they've lived compared to other people, um, where they are closer to the world wars, or it's just a bunch of data. That's really fun, engaging, something really to consider for someone that you're connected to. Now, we're not expecting you to do this with every single person in your database, but there might be some that just would get it and it'd be important for them. Um, sharing a YouTube video of their favorite band singing happy birthday. If you look up most people on YouTube and then the words happy birthday after, they'll be singing to them. Everyone from the Beatles to U2, even Star Wars. Sing happy birthday to them. It doesn't matter if you can't sing. The fact that you made it, that you even tried is even more charming. So sing to them. How about a gift card to a, something that they really like? You know, there's always Starbucks or their favorite restaurant. Movie tickets are a win every time. If you've ever received movie tickets as a gift, that just feels great. Make sure that you have all these things in hand because when you think of it and you have to go buy it and you have to go do it, you're not going to do it. So if this is part of how you're going to behave in your ultimate client relationship activities, have some of these things in stock. Then when these birthdays come up, you'll be ready to go. And then lastly, how about making an online donation in their name? There's a variety of causes that accept donations on someone's behalf. That also makes someone feel great. You know, clean water or children's uh, funds. There's a lot of different ways that you could do that. So again, this is on my desk, ultimate client relationship, UCR birthday tips. Okay, so uh, movie tickets, not a win these days. Just just pointing that out. Uh, I think everybody got that though. <laughs> um, but I did want to underline the critical nature of this program. Um, it's absolutely critical that you have a birthday program in place. Uh, there's just no, there's no option on this. If you're doing any kind of UCR or uh, CRM, a birthday program is a must have. Uh, these are all great ideas. But thinking outside the box is important too. Um, one thing though, when I, I like to say, uh, when it comes to birthdays and, and doing things and, 
and offers, uh, we get credit for the try. Um, let me give you an example. Um, Pre-pandemic, um, I was at a seminar and somebody was talking about the birthday program and said that one thing that he recommended was calling somebody on their birthday and say, who's buying your lunch today? Or who's buying you a cupcake? Or who's doing this? Well, 99% of the time, people have plans. They're not gonna just drop whatever they're doing and go to lunch with you. But you get credit for making the offer. And being strategic about it is, is not a bad thing. Um, offer to take somebody to lunch on their birthday, they're probably not gonna be able to, but they feel good that you offered. Um, you have to be ready and available to do it if they do take you up on it, um, but making that offer is, is good and we still wanna do it. Um, having a program in place is critical here. Having a system that you follow every day to be able to do this for people is crucial for your database. If you go onto Facebook and you go over onto the left and you cl click events, you're gonna be able to see everybody's birthday in there. You need to have that uploaded to your calendar so that you can look out a week in advance and know who you have to prepare for. Um, the system for this is critical because without a system, it's gonna fall apart. This is something that has to be done and kept up every single day. And those things don't work unless you have a system behind it. So coming up with a system that works for you to be able to build your database in a way that you're gonna reach out to them on a daily basis when these events come up is critical. Uh, the other thing that I think is absolutely critical is an anniversary program. Not anniversary in the, oh, we got married on this. Being able to reach out to somebody and say, hey, it's been six months since you bought your house. How have things been going? Hey, it's been a year, two years, five years. Hey, 10 years, everybody, congratulations. Um, so that's absolutely crucial. All right, I'm gonna go back to the video here. Really great ways to be more engaging and more thoughtful in how you wish someone happy birthday. So we'll look at tools and Facebook in terms of conversation. Now, finding shareable content is cool. We already talked about in book one about market snapshots really powerful. You can take a market snapshot and you can share it. Now, not everyone's buying or selling, but everyone is curious. So market snapshots, both informational and graphical. It's an image. It's, you don't have to know much about real estate to look and see browns and reds against the other colors and know, okay, more people are selling than buying or more people are buying than selling. Put a little explanation, creates an image. You put the hyperlink to your app. That's a great shareable piece on Facebook. I wrote something from a friend of mine, Matthew Ferrara, that I thought was really powerful. Forget viral, become vital. So everybody wants the latest viral whatever, typically some kind of video, makes them popular. But if you're popular amongst the people that care about you and your business, they'll connect you with others because you're vital to their relationships. When they hear real estate, they say, oh, you know what, Jordan Kingston, you have to use her. She knows what she's doing. She'll take care of you. You want things like that. Now, pop culture references are a great way to connect with people. There's, there are viral videos out there you want to do, and they'll connect with people and they'll make them smile. And the numbers prove it when people share things like charity. So things that to connect to giving and that make the world a better place. That's the number one impactful post. Number two are polls and quizzes. And what we mean by polls and quizzes are those questions you're asking, those calls to conversation. What do you think about this? Or has it been your experience that this has happened? Those are called polls and quizzes. Humor's up there at number three. Inspiration at number four. And we all love those inspiring videos and those funny videos. Tips are right up there, followed by news and then tech and home automation. So in the top seven, you can certainly find things that will connect with your sphere on Facebook and other online platforms this way. The numbers just prove it out. Those kind of things just get lots of engagement 
lots of interaction and shares. And when someone shares one of your posts with their friends, you are now exposed to people that up until this point you weren't even exposed to. So just find ways to be really engaging. So this is a little bit out of date as far as the, the Real Trends post is. I tried to find the most current one today and I wasn't able to find it. Um, I will say that polls and quizzes have fallen off quite a bit. Um, I don't remember, know if you remember a couple, I think it was 2017-ish, uh, 2018-ish. Um, there was a big controversy over um, Facebook and data leaking and things like that and polls and quizzes were one of the top culprits in that. And as a result, uh, polls and quizzes became a lot less popular on um, Facebook. Um, charity, humor, news, and educational pieces. I, I can't underline that enough. Um, you need that on your Facebook feed as well. But the other thing that uh, Emmanuel doesn't really talk about here, he kind of more hints at it, but one thing that I think is absolutely critical is not being a real estate robot. You don't want to be somebody who just vomits real estate. You need to be a person, have interest, show interest in the community, what's going on in uh, the area around you. Um, you know, when, you know, you get to the time of year when farmer's markets are starting back up, um, you know, posting links to, hey, the farmer's markets are about to reopen again, or, um, community events, things that are going on, um, COVID related stuff, um, specifically not, not, you know, news about necessarily the virus, but what's happening in the community right now to help protect people from COVID, um, that kind of thing. So don't focus too hard in on real estate, but it needs to be an important part of your, your page, but so does who you are as a person. You don't want your Facebook page to make it look like it's being run by John L. Scott PR. It needs to look like it's being run by Connor or Bonnie or Hong. Okay, back to the video. So a to-do, practice searches with the market snapshots on your smartphone and then share it. We've done this before. We did it in book one. Do it now, this time, sharing it on Facebook. And the question is, how confident are you using your GPS home search app? Remember we talked about how important this tool is at the moment. And I can only imagine as we move to 4.0 that it becomes even more powerful. So make sure you're moving that needle forward. You're growing and you're learning how to use that. So when we harness the power of our app, use hyper-local language. In other words, either the city or the neighborhood. So if you have a listing in Somerset, use the city. So a hashtag, that number sign, with either a set of words or a single word is going to now be a searchable field. You're going to look relevant and you're going to create something that's searchable. So if it's in a particular neighborhood, hashtag that. Again, you're sharing your listing. Or if it's a luxury home, luxury home of the week, do something that just connects with your listing to a proactive marketing strategy and you can look in the mobile ready tab. We have videos on how to share using social media and actually going and looking upstream for different marketing possibilities. And then you could ask questions. Here's the polls and quizzes idea. What do you think of the kitchen or what do you think of the backyard or what do you think of the home theater or what do you think of this? Let me know what you think. You can even put something. Do you like it? Do you love it? Or is it wow? which is the, you know, the, the most recent uh, reactions that you can have on Facebook. Engage your audience, ask them to react. So sharing those listings are really easy with your app. It's one click to share a button, to share on Facebook, put in some information, put those hashtags in, bang, you're now on Facebook with your, with your, um, your listing, has images, all information, and all the link backs are to you. Another thing you can do is share your mobile app. Anytime you use jlsapp.com slash your username, it creates a hyperlink. So when you share it on Facebook, it'll create an image hyperlink. You may want to put something like, do you want to see all homes in Portland? As an example, download my app. 
And wherever they are, if they're in Portland, they're going to want to do that. If they're somewhere else, they may not. But if your local, hyper-local market is there, it's going to make sense because that's where your, most of your friends are or the friends that are going to be viewing that. Make sure that you post that. And you're going to be looking at people from an upstream perspective. And what we mean by that is that you're getting in front of buyers and sellers before they even know they're ready. There's lots of data uh, on this. And there's, again, videos in my desk that talk about that. Using hyperlocal language in asking people to download the app is really powerful. And start your weekend off with a bang. We have data that shows that if you post these on a Friday or early Saturday, people are interested on weekends more than they are the rest of the week, especially the upstream buyers. You know, the people are just, you know, they just like driving open houses or if the right thing showed up, they're not actively searching, but they're curious. You'll get more downloads when you put post these towards the weekend than you do at any other time. So you should practice this. In fact, why don't we pause the video right now and share your app on Facebook. Sorry, I was muted there. I just said a whole thing and nobody heard me. One thing I'd like to let you guys know um, is with the app right now, um, we are currently having an error with um, the direct link. So if somebody goes to your direct link to uh, download your app, it will not come out automatically branded to you. Um, that's an error that they're working on. Hopefully it'll be corrected soon. I don't have a timetable for that yet though. Um, other thing that I wanna uh, kind of go here is, uh, can somebody explain to me, uh, uh, familiar with that term, do you know what it means? What term, you, you cut out there for me. Oh, uh, I said, uh, could somebody explain for me what upstream marketing is? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Hello? Um, I'm not super familiar with it. Yeah. I think okay. he just said that it was before people knew that they were really in the market. Exactly. It's getting, getting to buyers before they know they're ready. Uh, it's something you see a lot on uh, in Facebook marketing. Um, if you talk to... Um, you know, I've heard this from uh, certain friends that when they, uh, they or their, their family members, when they get to a certain age, especially if you're a younger woman, um, suddenly you start seeing wedding dress ads on Facebook everywhere. And it's because they are demographically targeting people who are interested in, who are, it's a time of life they might get married. So they start seeing that on their page. That's kind of what upstream engagement is. It's you're finding people who aren't yet sure that they're ready to buy a house and you start engaging with them and you get there before they know it. Um, in this case, what Emmanuel was talking about is you're, you're actually looking to engage with buyers in what is normally called the looky-loo phase, where they're basically just out looking at homes on the internet, um, things like that. It's really a useful Facebook is really good at this. Uh, if you're boosting ads, if you're placing ads, you can actually target people in an area based on certain demographic information. Um, and it really lets you get out in front of people and get your face out there. Um, Facebook ads are still fairly affordable. Uh, it all depends on the reach and how many people are looking at it, but you can set a fairly modest budget and set that as a hard limit, and then Facebook won't exceed that. So if you wanted to spend 
50 to $100 on an ad, um, it won't ever go over that. All right, let's continue. That wasn't so hard, was it? Now you'll get likes and you'll get information and you'll be able to go and check in your My Mobile Manager how many downloads you got. Then lastly, what will you be known for within your Facebook community? Because we all have a Facebook community. There's a group of people that we connect on there with. And so what do you want to be known for? So write it down. There's a difference between an expert and the expert. Have you ever met that person that they're the know-it-all? They know everything about X, Y, or Z. They're the go-to person. They're the guru. They're the whatever. Now, you may not be that person. And in fact, you know those people? They can sometimes kind of annoy you, can't they? But you are an expert. You have expertise in a lot of different things. If you remember back at video one, we looked at those quadrants. You're an expert. So what are the expertises that you're going to bring to your community? Write it down. Ultimate expertise. What's really cool is that third parties give us credibility. You know, when people ask you a question and it's only you answering, there's a limit to the credibility there. So a third party, and there's a, there's a short list here, realtor.com, Inman, Riz Media, MSN, uh, Home and Garden Television, House is a really great resource, Pinterest even. Having a third party endorse what you're talking about is really powerful. Having some kind of introductory text as part of the post is really helpful because now you can put your editorial on there. You can introduce it. You can create the calls to conversation, right? You can get um, more information, maybe some pictures with that. So the first line of the article could be something. What do you think about, right? What, what are your thoughts on this? So again, finding ways for a call to conversation when you share the article. Have you found this to be true in your experience? People love sharing their experience, really important. In which areas will you commit to being an expert? Your market knowledge, your community knowledge, investors. So is it the neighborhood where you live? Like write this down. What are those places that you're going to be an expert? Is it investment properties? Is it waterfront? What, what kind of things are you going to be an expert that you're going to share with your community? What are you going to be looking for? Now, housing update is one of the things you could share. Um, there's buying tips. There's decorating tips, there's technology, lots of different things. What kind of renovations have the best return on investment? What paint colors are in for this year? Make sure that you're um, finding things that help show value and speak to your community. And a question here, does your business plan include a budget for online lead generation? We call it um, online presence, your digital footprint, upstream. What is your upstream lead strategy versus the portal leads? And when you say portal leads, that could be Zillow or Truly or Realtor. You know, you're paying for leads through those portals. Nothing inherently wrong with that, but they're a different kind of lead than an upstream lead. So share a chart and ask an engaging question. So one of the great things that we have as Realtor members is we have access to all the great charts that come from the buyers and sellers generational trends. So NARC puts out a study we see what, what's happened in the past year. And one of the cool things is now we could share that chart and ask questions. Uh, there's a couple of um, examples here. Here's what the National, Sa National Association of Realtors says. You might want to explain what that acronym means. That's what that statistic tell us. What do you think? Or I found some interesting information. I'm curious, is this what you found to be true? Something like that. Use your own language. But sharing the chart, not just as you saying, hey, I'm the expert and here's what's going on. You can share expertise while engaging people to also share their opinions and thoughts. Don't be scared if there's some negativity. You've at least had some engagement. But just to put out a, a, a graph or information without any editorial, but even more important, to put out a graph or information without a call to conversation is a missed opportunity. So what questions will you ask? Make sure that you ask good questions. Write those down. 
Now, John L. Scott has a Facebook page where lots and lots of information is shared. So leverage that page and other pages to share content with your community. There's lots of leverage that you can have by information that is already curated for you. And all you have to do is hit share. Really important. So look for those articles, create conversations. You're not confident where to find these articles? Ask your office leader or owner and make sure you check JLS partner connection. Really important that you can find stuff that you can share, create conversations. So how confident are you with that? That number should be high. This should be something that you do on a daily basis, getting information out there to those. So just to step back there real quick, um, care about. there shouldn't really be a shortage of, of content for you. Um, there's lots of places to get it. Um, all of these that Emmanuel uh, mentioned are really good uh, resources. Another great one is Keeping Current Matters um, or KCM, you'll hear it uh, referred to a lot. Um, but KCM is a great resource. They post um, real estate content every day. Um, you can share it for free. If you want to brand it to yourself, you have to pay for it. Uh, they have a subscription, but KCM is a great website. Um, another thing to keep in mind, um, in addition to the uh, housing updates um, that you can post, there's also a video version of housing updates um, that I will show you here. If I go to my desk, and I go to the John L. Scott Library, I can go into Ultimate Client, nope, not there. It's gonna be our marketing and housing updates, I can find um, in one of these folders, for example, the East Side housing update here, um, there's gonna be a video and the video is gonna be found right here. Uh, it's the motion housing update. So I'll click on this and we can watch it. as it takes its sweet little time to download because I'm teaching a class. And that's what a uh, housing update looks, a motion housing update looks like. Um, one of the great things about this is that this video can be taken and posted directly to Facebook or Instagram. And the reason that you wanna do that is because Instagram and Facebook both prioritize video content uploaded to their servers. So by putting this on Facebook, it is more likely that people are gonna see it. Also, I do not, do not, do not, do not recommend uploading this to YouTube and then sharing that to Facebook. Facebook deprioritizes video that comes from other sources. So by going in and uploading this to Facebook, I kind of give myself a little bit of a boost in that department. Uh, video in general is great content. It doesn't need to be super uh, professional. We want it to look good. We want you to look good. So this is not something you do in your jammies before you've combed your hair. Um, but having great video content is important. Um, it, it's absolutely crucial these days. Uh, and that can be as simple as doing a virtual open house. Uh, it can be as simple as, um, talking about what you are noticing buyers are looking for in the market. Uh, anything that you maybe want to discuss on, um, Facebook can be done in a video format, um, but it's really great content to be posting on Facebook. 
uh, because like I said, Facebook really promotes it and it drives engagement. Uh, also, people like to see you. They like to see video. Um, one thing you want to be careful not to do, things that you don't want to post uh, are directly posting someone else's listing. That's a rules violation. Uh, we don't want to be in somebody else's property and talking about that property. Maybe while we're previewing it, that's not allowed. It's also considered advertising somebody else's listing. Um, those are a couple things we definitely want to avoid. Um, we're about to wrap, wrap that up and then I will uh, stop for questions here at the end. Conversations. So how confident are you with that? That number should be high. This should be something that you do on a daily basis, getting information out there to those that you care about. So we looked at Facebook as an ultimate client relationship database, communicating via Facebook, ways to celebrate your client's birthdays. I hope you'll never celebrate them boringly again. I don't even know if boringly is a word, but hopefully not. Creating a conversation online, harnessing the power of your John L. Scott app, really important, and your reticular activating system. What do you focus on? and sharing content on Facebook. So thanks for joining us. Stay connected, stay engaged, share with your clients. All right. If I had to pick two main points that I would absolutely critically take home from this is uh, number one, birthday program, birthday and anniversary program. Um, is absolutely critical, as is posting good content and making sure that um, you are giving calls to engagement. Uh, asking people to interact with you and asking people to engage with you is critical. Just fire hosing people with information doesn't make you all that um, relatable. Um, Questions, thoughts, concerns, things that weren't covered today regarding Facebook? I have a question. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about posting on Facebook. Are we regarding it to our own uh, Facebook page or are you regarding the, pay, the business page that we've created? Uh, a little bit of both. Um, I would say that a business page is probably something that you want to start working on. Um, because you'll get to the point here very quickly where running ads are a good idea and you absolutely have to have a business page to run ads. Mm -hmm. um, so you wanted, you kind of want to be strategically posting in both places, but when I am driving new customers, I'm driving into my business page, but I still want to, you know, people I'm already friends with and already friends with on Facebook, um, I want to keep them engaged as well. So one thing that a lot of people do is they will post to the business page and then use their personal account to share those posts back to their uh, existing friends. I see. Other questions? Colin, I was um, confused a little bit on the John L. Scott app. You said that there was a... Um glitch and, or error message coming through. I, I've had a problem with, well, I had an ancient phone and I finally got the, didn't support the John L. Scott app, but I finally have a good one now. So yep. um, what should I do to make sure that I get that out to people? Can I send people the link and tell them to upload it or is it a bad time to do that right now? I would say it's kind of a bad time to do that right now. Uh, at the moment, uh, if you have somebody who needs it, who really wants it because they're going to use it, uh -huh. then what you would do is um, have them download the app. Just go to the app store. You can send them your link if you want. Uh -huh. And then when it downloads, when it first loads up, it will ask them, are you currently working with the John L. Scott broker? And they just need to put your name in. Okay. What is, what's not working right now is the direct branding link. Okay. Uh, apparently due to... Um, a bunch, a couple security issues. Uh, John L, not John L. Scott, but the um, App Store on Apple and the Google Play Store both tightened up their security requirements, uh, mm -hmm. and so John L. Scott is having to jump through a bunch of hoops to get the auto branding to work again. 
and okay. they are in the middle of, of jumping. Okay. <laughs> little yeah. next beans. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I have a question on that app. Yeah. Um, John L. Scott app. So can we log into our own um, John L. Scott account on that app or we have to log in as a client? I'm not sure. You, you can't log in as the client from the app. Um, you can share the app with your clients and they can pick you as their broker. Um, but there's no way for you to log in as the client. Um, when what I know, mean is um, yeah. I'm, I'm using my email, personal email as a client to use the app. Yes. So um, you can do either. Um, there, there's really not a, there's not a, a, a broker side to the app. Okay. It's primarily meant, we, we want to promote it, but it's, pri it's meant, and as a for customer, for you to log into the app and, and say access my desk or any of the other John L. Scott tools. So if I um, want to share an app from the app, there's a button for share mm -hmm. app that would just uh, share Correct. the app without any branding, right? That's at the mm -hmm. moment. That's correct. Okay. Uh, they're working on getting it fixed so that when you share the app, if, if you've got Hong's branded app, if you share it, it will send Hong's branded app. At the moment, it's just generic John L. Scott. How do you get Hong branded app? Um, I guess that's my question. When you um, first download the app, it asks uh -huh. you, are you currently working with a John L. Scott broker? And you would type in yes, and you'd say Hong. Oh. Does that make sense? I, sure, yeah. Other questions? Okay. If there's not anything else, I want to thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. And then um, a week from, or two weeks from today on the 8th, uh, we'll be doing lab number three, which is all about cloud CMA. So uh, I hope you guys have a great day, and I will be talking to you soon. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day. You too.